joining us now on stage is Smriti Irani, Minister of Women and Child Development in the Government of India. Thank you so much, ma'am, for uh, taking time out and coming for this very special initiative. And this is Jen, my co-anchor for this session. We wanted to start by asking you about what is it that the government is doing currently? We were talking about yeah. employment opportunities no. uh, for those with disabilities, uh, from education to corporates to providing that actual uh, employment. But what is the government doing to help skill people? We already have, through the various uh, ministries of the government of India, skilled close to 1,94,000 people who have disabilities, or as the Prime Minister says, divyang. But I think that we need to dial back a little, Gargi. Where do you first identify an individual or a child uh, who has a challenge? One of the greatest, I think, challenges for a family is to come to terms with the fact that this is a child that needs support, this is a child with potential, and this is a child who, if you give the support that the child so deserves, can go possibly a longer way than you could possibly ever have gone. So I think, and I was just discussing with Sanjayji, uh, we in the Ministry of Women and Child Development, through close to 14 lakh Anganwadis, in the first week of December now, are launching one of the largest campaigns in the country, where children under the age of six, in collaboration with chief medical officers, in collaboration with our colleagues in the Ministry of Social Justice, we will help identify children who are in need of that support, children who are in need of identification if they have some kind of a challenge or if they have some kind of a disability. And uh, these are children who are currently seven and a half crores in numbers within our Anganwadi systems already. Now, with the early identification, there is a multiplier effect. One, there is an early understanding in collaboration with the medical community, with the local community, with the Anganwadi Asha workers, and with parents as to what is the challenge that the child faces, what is the support system that is currently available, what is the um, alternative to, let's say, early childhood education that the child deserves, and what is the long-term need of the child from an academic point of view. For instance, today, out of the 1 lakh plus, uh, 11 lakh plus government-aided schools across the country, or government schools, already in terms of accessibility, uh, there has been infrastructure provided to close to 8 lakh 33,000 schools, which means we will also help identify the nearest uh, school for a community where a child with disability needs that additional support or can help gain access. It will also help us identify Anganwadi centers which need additional infrastructural support vis-a-vis -vis, uh, children that have to be catered to with regards to disability. And I think that much has been spoken today with regards to... I, I think it's wonderful that you're going through the Anganwadis because earlier we were talking about, you know, yeah. we hear a lot in urban India, but in rural India there's lot of need and as you said to identify children to yep. uh, encourage teachers and uh, parents yeah. as well. I think with identification also comes this whole um, social output that this is not a child who has to face challenges alone. This is a child where communities need to come together in support of such a family and I think that is what will help resonate. Um, that is my belief when we begin uh, this particular collaboration across all states. We've already onboarded all state governments. We've already onboarded uh, across 18 ministries, our colleagues and partners, and stakeholders like UNICEF are already in support of this uh, venture of ours. Madam Minister, uh, what I have seen, still there is immense amount of stigma related to disability. And uh, in that part, to remove the stigma, what kind of awareness initiatives can be ideated or initiated from your department? Then? I think that the outreach with regards to Anganwadis and the systemic intervention to help identify disabilities amongst children is one such uh, tool 
to ensure that the stigmatization around the issue can be reduced. I also believe that there is a need to tell the story of more and more individuals who have received credit support uh, to grow their businesses. Today, close to 1,000 crores by the government of India and the national corporation has been given to people who wanted to start small businesses. Close to 1,43,000 individuals with disabilities, what, as I said, we call Divyang, they have not only taken that credit, but they have helped better their livelihoods, their small and medium enterprises, of which research now shows that 89% of those who took this credit for their businesses have now improved not only their monthly takeaway financially, but also substantially improved their own way of living. So I think the fact that you had an economic measure as to when you have access to, let's say, credit, um, what is the equivalent impact on the individual or the family's life, uh, I think those stories need to be told even more because you may have had the Paralympics and how they did so well in the medal tally. That has made national headlines, but the headlines also need to now tell stories about those individuals who've had disabilities but have done stupendously well financially. Absolutely, ma'am. When we talk about uh, disability and people with disability, we get lots of questions about employment. Generation of employment in the grassroots area is a challenge. So what can be expected in the upcoming years of the vision that we have, our government has, of uh, becoming the third largest economy in the world? So I think that one of the factors that can help enhance employability is the access to education and skill. So when I talk about the Anganwadi intervention, one needs to recognize that if you have this kind of an intervention early in life, you are psychologically preparing the individual child and the family unit to succeed. That this cannot be looked upon as an impediment to success, but this is a challenge that can be overcome with additional support academically, infrastructurally. I think there has to be a psychological conversation around the issue of disability at the grassroots. Once you provide access to educational institutions, as I have said to Gargi, that out of the 11 lakh schools today, we have access created in 8 lakh 33,000 schools. But apart from that, where are you now creating access? There are 35 international airports that now have access, 55 domestic airports that have access. So if you create access in more and more um, streams of mobility, then you create more opportunity. If in an age where AI is being leveraged or instrumentality becomes the fulcrum of manufacturing, how much of those who have a disability or those who are divyang can be encouraged to work with machines and machine tools? And not only work with machine tools, there is an elaborate industry that can be leveraged with regards to production of machine tools within our country. So I think that mm. there is a whole economy and an ecosystem that can be serviced, and those are the employment opportunities that you've been talking about. Right, no, no. absolutely, access yeah. to education, and as you said, accessibility for movement around our cities uh, and you know, various parts of the country. If you could share with us what the government is doing and what in the ministries as well, we heard earlier of a complaint about going to a government department, how, uh, you know, where the office was on the first floor, there was no elevator available. These kind of issues is something we should not be, you know, coming across. Uh, today accessed over 1,011 government buildings in terms of accessibility. But do recognize that we are in a structure where the center and the state both collaborate on issues of accessibility. And one needs to also recognize that the issue around providing better infrastructure around disability was not a conversation on main stages such as this, let's say 12 years ago or 10 years ago. 
So I think more of the conversations that happen around mobility, about infrastructure, about skilling, about financing manufacturing needs of people with disabilities, I think that's where there will be more and more awareness and a need. Why only from individuals who have a disability? Why not by all citizens concerned? So why only look at access to, let's say, a government building? Why not all housing societies? Why not all so-called gated communities? Why not all village infrastructure? So I think the sky's the limit in terms of how to create more and more opportunity. And do remember, we have not reached the utopian state where our population is not set to grow beyond what it is today. You will have now more and more centers which are not completely urban in nature, which are not completely rural in nature, which are right in the middle called urban. How many of those centers now have infrastructure? to take a whole force of individuals that are thronging and how many such individuals or institutions now have created that accessibility. All right, well, uh, thank you so much, Minister, for talking to us thank and you. sharing so much about what the government is planning and, you know, this initiatives like this need support from uh, ministers like you and more awareness to be created around this. Thank you for having this conversation, much needed. <laughs> thank, thank you, you. ma'am. Thank you so much. I'd like to invite on stage Mr. Unsu Kim, MD and CEO, Hyundai Motor India, and Mr. Tarun Garg, COO, Hyundai Motor India, to present a small memento to Mr. Rani. <laughs>